Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows and release a new video from Monday to Friday. Today I want to talk about The Artifice Girl. It's a thought-provoking drama that revolves around three people's relationship with an artificial intelligence called Cherry. Written and directed by Franklin Rich, this film explores humanity's ever-evolving relationship with AI. It starts off with an intense interrogation and slowly evolves into a fast-paced debate on the morality of using AI. It delivers its story in the form of a three-act play with each act giving us a look into a distinct time period in the AI's development. Each act sees the cast come together for another conversation about the AI's evolution, and we see how the characters' thoughts on the subject matter change over time. The dialogue is generally witty and makes for good banter, but at times can be overloaded with technical jargon. I didn't have any trouble following along, but for a less tech-savvy person it might be a challenge. The cast consists of four main characters and a few extras. Each of the main characters comes with a unique perspective on AI and how it should be used. They play off of each other through intense debate and interrogation, and delve deep into what makes us human. We have Gareth, played by Franklin Rich and Lance Henriksen, the AI developer. A man who sees AI as a tool. He understands most of the inner workings, but doesn't see the full potential of what he's created. Rich and Henriksen both play him as a guarded and somewhat cold individual. We get little snippets of the emotions hiding underneath through their facial expressions and body language. But it isn't until Henriksen makes a grand speech at the end that we finally learn his true thoughts. Henriksen nails the speech and both of them perfect the guarded nature of Gareth. Then there are the two agents who initially interrogate Gareth, Dina and Amos, played by Cinda Nichols and David Gerard. Dina is a cowboy who comes in guns blazing and sees the AI as a means to an end. She's concerned about the ethics of the situation, but her reservations are overshadowed by the good the AI does. Nichols plays Dina as an uptight, aggressive, and insulting person. She softens over time, but maintains a lot of the strengths she had in her introduction. She makes a few powerful speeches, but doesn't get to emote as much as the others. Amos is completely disturbed by Gareth's AI, and while he's more receptive at first to the situation, he quickly changes tune and starts to ask hard questions about it. David Gerard, who plays Amos, comes across as the reasonable one in the room, but becomes a force to be reckoned with when he's mad. Finally, we have the AI Cherry, played by Tatum Matthews. At first, she's like Siri, an app on a computer screen that answers your questions using basic searches. The way she moves, talks, and responds to their questions, she appears more robotic than human. Her personality and physical being start to develop, and her desires grow alongside them. Matthews plays her in a somewhat robotic manner at first, introducing more and more human-like mannerisms over the course of the film. By the end, she's like a normal little girl with real emotions. She plays the emotional outbursts in a reasonable manner and does a good job of maintaining that uncanny feeling to her character even as a fully realized being. The film explores the topic in depth and fleshes out the different viewpoints on technology in a captivating way. There isn't anything beyond the conversation, no action, no big drama, just a complex moral issue in four different perspectives. Visually, the journey is captivating but is built on a shoestring budget. It makes use of dramatic lighting and slow methodical camera movement to make every shot feel like the most important one. It captures the character's emotions in great detail and frames the conversations in an intense way. The downside is that the entire thing takes place in three different rooms with two of them being the same room at different points in time and the third being a fancy looking home. The sets are bare minimum and don't reflect the gravity of the situation. They're supposed to be in a government office building at one point, but it looks like a janitor's closet. They also didn't do a good job of showing the passage of time. One second we're looking at the younger versions of the characters and then suddenly they're all 20 years older. It felt a little jarring and it took me a second to register what had happened. Sound-wise, the film doesn't really have a soundtrack. There's a song to mark the end of each act and one more at the end. But other than those moments, the film is mostly silent. There's a bit of ambient noise, the occasional sound effect, but mostly just talking. The silence lends itself to the gravity of the situation and lets the audience focus more on what's being said than the general atmosphere in the room. But it also feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. There are a lot of dramatic conversations in this film that would have had a much bigger impact with the right soundtrack behind them. Overall, I really enjoyed this film and I found the subject matter absolutely thrilling. The different moral questions that they posed to one another about AI had my mind running at a mile a minute, and the way they developed Cherry into a near-human-like being was a wonderful way to get the audience to question their own humanity. The budget was obviously quite small and that reflects in the lack of physical locations and music, but the actors are doing an incredible job and the writing is tight. It is an experience experimental, but if you like thought-provoking pieces, this one's fantastic. 6 out of 10. And remember, those are just my thoughts on the film. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Bye bye